This week, teams of NJ Counts volunteers are fanned out across the state trying to get a handle on the number of homeless in train stations and tent cities in shelters and in the elements. Their number may be growing since a program providing temporary housing assistance was shut down. Now the state Senate president is trying to get it reinstated permanently for those who are chasing the dream. Brenda Flanagan reports. And there are people that are homeless now because of what they did. Senate President Steve Sweeney joined a group of social service advocates and strongly criticized the State Department of Human Services decision to let two housing assistance pilot programs expire, cutting $15 million in aid and affecting some 3,000 disabled, elderly, and mentally ill residents. Since the end of this current pilot in July, my agency, along with many other legal and social service agencies, has seen a flood of vulnerable individuals and families who are either currently homeless or facing loss of their housing. And people are being made homeless as a result of a bureaucratic decision that was completely self-inflicted. This is not something that someone else made the Christie administration do. The Department of Human Services redirected the $15 million in emergency assistance funding because it claimed county agencies had done a poor job of finding permanent housing for clients. But Sweeney disagreed. This is so wrong and it needs to be fixed. And it needs to be fixed immediately. And I've really, you know, I've, I, I like the acting commissioner personally, but I'm really disappointed in the way they've handled this. You know, and, and it needs to be corrected quickly. The Senate president compared the department's action to its controversial Return Home New Jersey program when it tried to cancel out-of-state residential treatment for severely disabled New Jerseyans. That uproar finally ended when Governor Christie agreed to continue those services. Sweeney says the DHS isn't well run. And when you deal with families that feel that the department's anti-disabled community, it's disappointing, and the governor has weighed in on multiple occasions to right the wrong here. In December, Human Services announced a new six-month intensive case management program designed to help all 3,000 clients, but the rules remain rather opaque, according to care providers. And I think it's still a process that they're figuring out as they're going, and we're not getting a definitive answer as to what's going to happen going forward. But a spokesman for the governor's office said they're absolutely not aware of anyone losing benefits and called Sweeney's statements irresponsible. Spokesman Brian Murray said this is alarmist and politics of the worst sort that plays on the fears of the most vulnerable by suggesting they're at risk when they simply aren't. Anyone who was in the pilot program is currently being worked with to identify permanent stable housing solutions. It's truly unfortunate that they have misrepresented our efforts to provide the very best support through hands-on intensive case management or would suggest that anyone is being left behind. It simply isn't true. Sweeney sponsoring a bill that would not just restore those emergency housing assistant programs, it would make them permanent. He's hoping to discuss his proposal with the governor. At the State House in Trenton, I'm Brenda Flanagan, NJTV News. New Jersey's efforts at criminal justice reform have gotten national attention for cutting its prison population by 26 percent since 2000, by easing sentencing, by opening drug courts and reentry programs and investing in mental health services. Tonight, a lesser known program that helps inmates not when they get out of jail, but while they're still in. Michael Hill reports. East Jersey State Prison. It was home for most of Boris Franklin's 11-year incarceration for a deadly drug deal. You know, you sell drugs and this is the way out of poverty. Eva Lee's B.B. Gillespie spent 13 years in prison for a shooting. It was a self-discovery process as well. Both B.B. and Boris found something liberating about being locked up. It's funny, I had to go to jail to go to college. It was really, and it wasn't about academics because I, I was rated above average mostly through school and I'd never heard the word college. Through the multi-foundation funded NJ Step, 
or New Jersey Scholarship and Transformative Education in Prisons Consortium. In conjunction with the State Corrections Department and Parole Board, Boris and Beebe went to college in prison and earned associate's degrees. NJ Step is a group of nine New Jersey colleges and universities that sends volunteers and instructors behind bars to teach. I maintain like a 3.9 GPA. Upon release and if accepted, former inmates can enroll at Princeton or a handful of community colleges. And it was a big deal. I mean, I was excited about being able to go to college. We was learning new stuff. We was reading new things. So Rutgers has given me that ability to like set my own path. B.B. and Boris are pursuing degrees at Rutgers through its Mountain View program. Rutgers history professor Donald Roden founded Mountain View after he began volunteering behind bars in 2002. This is just one small step uh, toward, toward, uh, toward reform and, and toward uh, social justice. I've been really hopeful as well. Last year, President Obama came to Rutgers, Newark and praised his reentry program. Compared to the size of the prison population, this program is relatively small, but it says it has a huge impact and it's going noticed. We have really been intentional about trying to create a model, a transportable model, <laughs> learning as we go, lots of growing pains and lessons along the way that then we're looking to be able to um, bring to other places. And we've been asked by several different states. NJ Step and Mountain View say only 5% of their students go back to prison. Two have received Truman scholarships, including Walter Fortson, who had a successful business while attending Temple University and then turned to drug dealing because it was more profitable. I think that the program helps to mitigate the stigma that goes with incarceration and allows people to get back on their feet and start a new life. And that is good for the state of New Jersey and for society. Bibi says she plans to work with ex-offenders. Boris crisscrosses the country to do motivational speaking about prison life and more. This one at the Global Center for Advanced Studies. We're going to try to get through these situations like men. We're not going to become savages in this point. And it became a sense of calm. He shares his own story of being unchallenged in school once his family moved from Piscataway to New Brunswick. They'll give you a bunch of dates, tell you to remember some stuff, and it'll be based on whether or not you got a good memory. There will be no cognitive challenges whatsoever. Boris says he's already forming a nonprofit to target underserved communities and the results of not being trained to think, of being overwhelmed emotionally, but too immature to make smart choices. Some individuals don't like what it's like to be not only a young black man, to be a young black man and afraid. It's not really socially acceptable in that community. You know, so it, it boxes individuals into a, a, a certain set of behaviors that keep them essentially juvenile. Boris says he intends for the school to prison pipeline to become the school to college to career pipeline. Michael Hill, NJTV News.